Master pages can be changed out dynamically using a page pre-init event. So in this section, I'll show how we can make a printable version of a master page. And what we'll do is make it so the user can click on a print link. We'll switch out the master page, and that way when they print it, only the content would show up in the printed page. Now to do that, we can leverage the page classes page pre-init event, an example of that shown here. The page class itself has a master page file property and we can simply assign a different master page to that using the page pre-init event. Now this can only happen at this level, any later in the page lifecycle and you won't be able to switch out the master page because at that point it'll be too late and the content will start to be merged in with the master page content placeholders. But within the page pre-init, it's quite easy to simply give a different path to a master page and switch it out. So let's take a look at how we can do that. ASP.NET makes it really easy to switch out master pages dynamically at runtime by simply handling the page pre-init event and then changing the value of the master page file property of our page class. So in this section I'm going to show you how we can do that type of scenario and make a printable version of a page by making a different master page. So earlier in the module I created this simple master page with a footer and a simple header. Now we could come in and wrap our header and our footer in an ASP panel control and then just hide each of those panels when we want to print. And that would be an option. And there's actually several options to make a printable version. But I'd like to demonstrate how we could make a separate printable master page that just doesn't have a header and a footer. So to do that, I'll right click on the project and add a new item. We'll select a master page and I'll just call this print.master. Now what I'm going to do is go into default master and we'll grab from form up to the form. So everything in between the form tags and we'll just paste over and I'm mainly doing that to make sure that my ID matches up. I'm also going to take out this head placeholder because we don't really need that in this example. But if your page adds anything up into that control, if it references the head using a content control, you would want it. So for our page, we're going to do this timesheet viewer and you'll notice we do leverage the head. So the bottom line here is before you go stripping out content controls, even if you're not going to be using it much, you want to make sure that that's not referenced by the page that will switch out and use this master page. It needs to match up, in other words. So now what I can do is, going back to Timesheet Viewer, you'll notice I've added a hyperlink here that just links right back to itself with print equals true. So I'm going to go ahead and add one more line break. And then let's run this as is. And you'll see that as I click the link, it's just going to link right back to itself. But if we click print me, you notice up on top I add a query string variable. Now we don't even really have to add equals true. We could even just put print up there and this would still work. Now what I'm going to do though is now that we have a print.master, I need to change the pages master page file path to print.master. So we'll come in and we'll go into our code behind. And this is the code behind, of course, of the page that we want to work with. And we'll go in and add a page pre-init that takes an object sender and an event args E. And now when pre-init is called, I want to switch out the master from default back to print.master. So that's pretty easy to do. Timesheet viewer inherits from page. Page happens to have a master page file, so we'll simply say master page file equals, and we want to start at the root of the application, so I'm going to put a tilde slash, and then we'll go ahead and give it print.master. Now, if we do that currently, though, let's run it as is. We'll go to uh, timesheet viewer here. And you'll notice it automatically stripped off. I mean, it did what we want, but we didn't uh, click on the print me yet. And so what's happening right now is it's automatically switching it no matter what happens to print.master. So what we want to do here is say if the request query string has inside of it, and there's an overload here for the string name, has print available. If that does not equal null, then we want to go ahead and switch out the master page. 
So let's go ahead and build that. Looks like we're good, we succeeded. And now let's go ahead and run Timesheet Viewer. All right, so you can see that we got our default header and our footer. But now when I click print me, that query string variable will show up and you'll see that we're now on a printable page. And now when I click on things, it stays on that master page because of the presence of this print equals true. Now we could have certainly checked if print equals true, but in reality, even that will work, just doing print. So that's an example of how we can dynamically change out master pages by using the page pre-init along with the page classes master page file property.